Today I'm going to show you how to cut up cedar elm logs on the sawmill. Some of the problems we run into, how to overcome them, just things you need to know to be a good sawmiller. Stick with us, we'll show you how to do this. We have three of these cedar elm logs to cut up, so we're going to get started on the first one here. Cedar elm is a moderately hard wood, but the fact that it has interlocking grain makes it a good choice for cutting boards or something that will be abusing the wood. It stays together better. If you look at that uh, log laying on the sawmill, you see it's kind of wavy. We're having trouble with the blade following the grain of the log, so we're going to change put a new sawmill blade on it. We're down to the last cut on this log and the problem is the cut is so low that our log holders or steel log holders are going to hit the blade. So you progressively have to lower the log holders, there's three sets of them, one at a time go over them then put them back in place. And that's what you see me doing here just so we don't hit them with that saw blade. If the saw blade even touches those things, it's ruined, it's dull. Well, you know what was funny about that? It seemed like every time I come to one of these knots, it stopped. It would cut real clean till you got right here, then it won't stop. And a couple of times it doesn't. See, there's another limb down there. Well, apparently them limb knots are hard. So. I am going to uh, cut this log into one inch and inch and a half boards. So they're gonna be very thin. It's a lot easier for me to anchor seal it while it's in the whole log than it is to try to do each little old board when we get through. It does need the end grain sealed, but it's just easier to do it in the whole log for thin cut lumber. Notice the uh, beautiful color, light pink color of this cedar elm. And the, the fine look to the grain, this stuff is just really unusual. Now this come from Ranger, which means it's of a different group of CRM than we have here locally around Quinlan. And it's funny that they're all cedar elm, but they look different. This has got some fantastic looking grain in this particular cedar elm. It has to do with the chemicals or the soil properties that these trees grow in. It makes them look different. And see, that's all the time it took to uh, seal the end grain on this lock. Pretty quick work. What I'm doing here is uh, measuring from the center point of the log or the pith down to that board that's laid across the rails. Uh, what I want to do is get the pith of this log, both ends of it, in the same plane as those rails that the sawmill is going to ride on. Uh, if you don't do that, you end up with a pith running down through several pieces of lumber. And I like to cut the center pith out and dispose of it in one piece very necessary thing if you want really quality wood out of your uh, logs. 
A week ago here, we had a heavy ice storm. Dropped an inch and a half of ice on the ground and it was all over the trees, froze to them, busted limbs off, it made a mess. But here we are a week later, of course we're in Texas and the weather changes often. It's 60 degrees out here and bright and sunny and just a perfect day. So uh, with the bad weather gone, we can move on to other things. Now today is a very special day for me. Today is February 8th, 2022. And this is my 73rd birthday, 73 today. So you might ask yourself, what does a 73 year old old man want to do on his birthday? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up this sawmill and start cutting up these cedar M logs. I really like sawmilling and cutting trees and dealing with wood. It's something I get a great deal of pleasure out of. When you have your birthday, I hope you find out what is just fun and enjoyable to you and you do that on your birthday too. Well, here we are on uh, starting again on these cedar M logs. Yesterday we cut one up into two inch thick slabs, natural edge slabs. Uh, again, we're cutting these up for cutting boards is what we're thinking about using them for. Uh, this is the second log. Now I'm gonna cut this log in a combination of a little over one inch, like one and a sixteenth of an inch thick, and then I'm gonna cut some that's like one and five eighths inch thick. Uh, and I'll probably vary them as I go along. They won't be consistent one size or the other until I get down to the pith, and then we will figure out what we're gonna make out of that pith wood. Uh, so we'll work on that. But we're gonna get started milling this into thinner boards. At the very end of this video, there will be a, a chart adding up all of this uh, cedar M lumber that we have produced out of these three logs for this episode. Take a look at it. Uh, might be of interest to you just how much lumber is produced out of just three logs. And remember, we're doing this by the board foot and, and we sell sawmill lumber by the board foot. So how many board feet you produce means more profit. It's uh, very important that we get the sawdust off these logs. It's wet, the, the wood's wet and the sawdust is wet and if we just lay boards back on top of it, that sawdust will attract mold and mildew. Pretty soon you got black mold on you, your logs or your lumber that you're getting off. You can uh, brush it off. I found out it's more efficient to blow it off. So either way you get it off, it just needs to be removed or you're gonna have some mold and mildew building up on your lumber. And this is much more important for people that air dry their lumber than keel dry it. If this stuff was going straight to a keel, that would dry it. But most keels also stack their lumber out and let it dry 30, 90 days before they ever stick it in the keel. So it's gonna mildew. you. So again, get rid of the sawdust. These boards are 
17 and a half inches on this end and 14 inches on the other end. Got a little taper to them. This board is cut at an inch and a half. And it's heavier. You might notice that uh, quite often I pull the sawmill with a strap. That's for two reasons. Depends which way the wind's blowing. I'd prefer to be upwind from the sawdust coming out of the sawmill. But the uh, big reason also is if you're in front of the sawmill, you can see when the blade starts to deflect to get out of alignment. And you can see just about everything that might go wrong with your sawmill. If you're standing behind the motor and part of the chassis kind of hides that from view and makes it very difficult to recognize a problem until after it happens. So uh, quite often I'll put that strap on the sawmill just to have something to pull against and uh, keep a good eye on what I'm cutting. This chain and using the tractor is a method I've come up with about flipping the log over or rolling it. Uh, it is uh, very helpful and uh, you know it is just hard to, to roll some of these logs cause the weight of them and the size of them. But this method seems to work pretty dang good uh, by just flipping them and it also use it when I'm, when I'm squaring a log for lumber and I want four square sides, you can set this same setup up and just roll the log one quarter turn rather than all the way over and uh, get your next cut going. So, saves a lot of back work using this method and it seems to work pretty good. I get questions occasionally about all the waste that uh, saw milling produces. Uh, as the public's desire for different cuts of lumber has changed over time, uh, I have started cutting up more and more of these logs with two natural edges on them. In other words, I'm just flat cutting them and uh, leaving the natural edges on them rather than go to the trouble of squaring it up, which cuts that lumber off, which is waste. Uh, if a customer shows up and wants a square straight edge, I just simply pull the uh, piece of lumber out that they want and bring it up here to the sawmill and just stand on its edge and just rip a straight edge on it. So if that's what they're looking for, we can take care of it, but it cuts down on the amount of waste if I leave that natural edge on it to start with, and I'm finding out more than half my customers now want natural edge boards and lumber for various projects. Why I keep doing that is when you're in really hard wood that has very distinctive grain, sometimes the blade will try to follow that grain up or down. And that's why I like to pull and be in front of the saw because I can see as that blade starts to go up or down. If I'm out here, you really can't see it from the rear. So what I'll do is set 
move the saw about that far and just rock it back and forth so that it can eat its way down flat and start cutting flat again. Don't mean in a foot or two it won't start following the grain again, but that's the best to do. Now, with experience on a sawmill, after that just gets worse and worse, what it really means is your saw blade is getting dull. So when it first starts doing it, I'll just try to deal with it, but if it persists, I'll have to stop and change blades for a sharper saw blade. The problem about the blade defecting, it's still doing it a little bit. I like one more cut finishing this log out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make one more cut. I may have to battle it, but uh, really it's getting dull enough. I probably should change the blade also. So it's a gamble where I can really get a, another cut smooth or not. We'll see, but we're gonna have to change the blade pretty quick. All right, we're toward the center. So, look at there. Gonna get a 15 inch wide cutting board on that end. And on this end, I'm gonna get about a 13 inch wide cutting board. So, that water has ice chunks in it this morning, so it's getting real hard to regulate it. It's either too much or too little as those ice chunks get hung up. the finger. That's the pith of the log, or the very center of it. I have cut boards off of both sides of the pith. We never want to include the pith inside anything. I don't care if it's a cutting board, a tabletop, a bar uh, top, or anything, because that wood is harder than the rest of the wood and it's gonna crack. So, being that I'm making cutting boards, I've got solid cutting boards. But a lot of time people like to laminate different colors of wood together. So what I'm gonna do is cut this into, once I clean it up, I'm gonna cut it into basically two inch billets that then can be put in a cutting board as two inch strips. Or turn them crossways and make them three inch strips. So you have your choice. So one, I, at the other end, the pith was eight inches off this board. Over here, it is, geez, 11 inches off the thing. So I've got to go to the other end and raise that board up till it meets the same height as this so the, on the pith in one board right down the center. So I'm gonna jack this up till I got the pith personally horizontal to the rails on my sawmill. And that way it's only on one piece. So.
has measured again. I'm reading about 10 inches on this end. Recheck this end. Sometimes as that end goes up, this end goes down, so you have to keep checking it. And that's about 10 and a half inches there, so that's close enough. Now we want to do one more check. We want to see that it's more or less vertical. That's, that's good and vertical right there. And that is there too. We're, we lucked out. We lucked out, no adjustment needed. It's 11.16 in the morning. With any luck, I can get this done right here for lunch. It's talking about the pit. I've got it lined up on each end parallel with the pit. But what I'm seeing right here is actually this, the pith rises then falls. It's higher in the middle. So you can't help that. It's just one of them things. But unusual to see pith rise and move that much. We're gonna flip it over since I'm getting into the pith and start cutting from the other side. I need to make one more cut. So I need to low, lower my log holders so that the saw blade won't hit them. All right, that's the pith of the log. It's got no use for it whatsoever. So we're gonna throw it away. Good morning. Welcome to George Woodworking. I'm Sully. Today we're gonna to be cutting up the cedar elm log uh, into one and a half inch boards for cutting boards. All right, so with this cedar elm log, what we have here is so we had a crotch piece at the top. We ended up cutting that off uh, to preserve it for some bowl blanks. As you can see the pith is right here. I do have some room here for a decent board. So 
the markings right here. It's where the saw is coming through. And you can tell one of the teeth is, is bad on that blade. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and change that blade out so we can get a better cut and flip the log over. I've already changed the bandsaw blade. Got the log hooked up to be rotated. Now I'll knock out the, uh, the brackets holding it and flip it over. You see that one spot where the blade stopped. Other than that, really good cut. Add some more tension to the blade. And we should be good. Look what the pit's doing, it's just like a snake going through there. <laughs> oh man, look at that. See, that's why I wanted to say that cross through it off of that, because that's what you see. All right, it's good feathering. Yeah. seal the end of it. I noticed that other stuff we've already cut is already, even though it's anchor sealed, it's showing cracks. Okay. So we're going to need to anchor seal this before it goes to the barn. Let's see what the size of this one is. Uh, you know, that may just go like it is. What's what, right? About two inches? Two and a sixteenth. Well, let's just go with it. Oh, just like it is. Just like it is. Good way, just a bit. There you go. Okay. Yeah, we may want to anchor seat close up here where we can just work on it. Okay. Down. All right. Well, we've finished cutting up these three cedar elm logs, and behind me here you can see the uh, outcome of all of that saw milling. There's quite a few board feet of uh, cedar M lumber. Uh, as a saw miller, you know, we always try to calculate uh, or add up how many board feet our logs produce because we really turn around and sell it lumber at the sawmill by the board foot. So these three logs done a pretty good uh, turnout on board feet, but that's not really what's great about these logs. It's the grain. These, grain, these logs come from Ranger, Texas, and they have a unique grain to them. It's just going to be gorgeous once it dries. But we've got to take these things and dry them. The uh, one-inch lumber in here will probably be dried by the end of the hot Texas summer. But there is inch and a half and two-inch boards that may take two years to dry. I have a moisture meter down here in the barn and I'll check them periodically just to see when they're dry. I never sell lumber until it's dry because it hadn't finished uh, shrinking and warping and doing all the things lumber likes to do. So I make sure it's dry before it goes out of here. So we'll keep a check on it. <laughs>